Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time Wednesday night. Coming up next, we're going to be going in depth talking about Impact's big changes and their uh, changes to the live Impact from the last Thursday. We've also got Ask the Booker, the history book, and uh, Interactive is actually back where we're going to answer more of your questions. Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time Wednesday night starts right here, right now. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report, Prime Time Wednesday night. Damian Nelson sitting here alongside David Hero. And without further ado, let's go right into this week's in-depth segment. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at the new look and format and feel of TNA Impact Wrestling. David Hero, it's no secret they're going for a little bit more of a reality-based kind of uh, show. It started two weeks ago with that opening segment with Hogan and Bully Ray and Kurt Angle, Jeff Hardy, uh, and AJ Styles, which, we need to talk about that a little more, which led into what we saw last Thursday with the live impact, and based on comments from TNA President Dixie Carter, is only a hint of what we are going to see. She basically, in a press release, TNA saying, TNA cameras will be posted everywhere. Backstage meetings recorded in real time. And the show is going to give fans access to conversations and vantage points that have never been seen before, such as production meetings, talent evaluations, and post-match critiques. So, David, before we go into some of the comments, uh, quotes, rather, from Dixie Carter, let's go back to two weeks ago in that opening segment, fifth, uh, about 12 minutes of uh, discussion amongst the boys. I like that. If that's what they're going to do, I think it makes perfect sense. It gives a backstory, a feel. I always talk about being invested emotionally into the characters, and they did a great job of pointing out the pros and the flaws of each guy. You know, it made Jeff Hardy look kind of sneaky. It made Bully Ray seem irritable as the underdog bad guy. Kurt Angle coming across as the cocky best in the world, and AJ Styles as a good old country boy that just wants, you know, to be the best he can. If that's what they're going to do, and, and that's what they were doing with Impact, but I don't like the fact that they're going to start giving away, you know, they're going to take more and more away from the illusion, from the magic that is pro wrestling. The last thing you want to do is to tell the fans, to slap them in the face and say, hey, it's not real. It's all on these sheets. It's all on these run sheets. We're just following a script. You don't want to relay that message. I don't mind the critiquing of the talent. I don't mind ha you know, showing some of the backstage meetings. As long as it tells the story to get them from the backstage to the ring to make it look like it's a legitimate contest to then coming in the back. It can be scripted reality. It doesn't have to be reality. Well, most reality is scripted. If you are that fan though ah wrestling's fake ah, i don't watch this stuff it's all scripted and you know you've 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 not paid attention to the product to the product because of that does this get you interested though because now you're seeing the process by which these things happen it may get you interested but the main question is will it sustain your interest if they come out and say, this is, you know, this is who's supposed to win, this is why they're going to win, blah, 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 blah. If they go that deep into it, that's a complete disaster. I think they're smart enough not to do that. No, and they are smart enough because they have people in place and creative that do tell stories that do. The past few weeks, TNA has had a purpose. Past few months, well, TNA has had a purpose. I'm just saying it's gotten a lot better over the past few weeks. It got better a few months ago. Now it's on track where they're telling stories, where they're going forward with the storyline. They're not going off in five million different directions. Let's just hope they keep that game plan and throw in a little shenanigans on occasion, but not expose the business. Do you remember the documentary that came out in the 90s, I believe, The Unreal Story of Professional Wrestling? Yes. And do you remember the waves and ripples it caused with who had talked to them and who had revealed what? Because they were getting a little too close to the innards of the business. Now you've got a wrestling company who arguably should be commended for doing something different, but a wrestling company who is potentially going to be doing the same thing. And 
they got to be different from WWE, and this is a way that they're going to be. But at the same time, I wonder I, I, how do you how do you keep that line though? How do you keep that line between what's really going on in the back and what they're going to portray is going on in the back? That's going to be the challenge because l listen to what Dixie said. She said and TNA President Dixie Carter qu had some quotables from that press release. She said, and I quote, we took a step back to look at our product with fresh eyes. People watch TV differently today than before, and the wrestling format itself has become stale. What happens backstage, in the office, and on the road is so entertaining <laughs> that we decided it was time to pull the curtain way back and give viewers a peek at that world as well. Over the next few weeks and months, viewers will continue to see our show evolve as we expose more real aspects of our business that have always been sacred. That's a little scary. It is scary because I don't mind, you know, sh showing road stories of the guys maybe in the cars traveling from town to town. That's, Funny, haha. Huh? That you know what? That's like going to the Hall of Fame. You want to hear those kind of stories. Right. But. But. Yes. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that butt's a full little word. I. Uh, I have faith in Dave Lagana and the creative team in TNA where they're going to do it the right way. Absolutely. Because they do respect the business. And you know what? But this is just a way to create, I don't know, intrigue, maybe some They're doing something different. Doing something different. And it's going to be interesting to see how WWE Entertainment acknowledges this. Because they will in some weird kabuki-ish way. But is the statement that she made about the wrestling format itself being stale true? When you look at not just what's happening in Impact Wrestling, but you look at the business overall right now, there's no doubt that viewing habits and entertainment options have changed substantially since the last peak in professional wrestling. But is it true that the, the wrestling format as we know it is stale? Absolutely. The interesting thing about this is that Sting and Hulk Hogan are involved in it. Two icons, two legends, two guys that for the most part have protected this business as much as they can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over the past few years, Hogan has done some different things and whatnot. But uh, they're definitely going to change it up a little bit. And if this works, it's almost like when ECW started doing different things with, with Paul Heyman. Yeah, yeah. And how the other wrestling companies saw it was getting good reaction, and they copied it. Maybe TNA Impact Wrestling is onto something similar. Mm -hmm. and, and, again... You gotta try new stuff, and you gotta, you know, WWE is reinventing what they do with Raw when they go to three hours, starting at that 1,000th episode on July 23rd. They, they're adding interactive elements to the show, and and you know we don't know exactly what those are gonna be yet. Well, TNA's also doing the, the same the thing. The first hour is gonna be sponsored by Twitter. There's no question about it, and hashtag trending. Uh, so, so maybe both companies do realize that the uh, current uh, format is is stale, and you know, arguably people want to see wrestling, but the same people that talk about they want to see wrestling are the ones that don't watch wrestling; they watch for the entertaining pieces. You know, I disagree because even when the Attitude Era was as amazing as it was, I think more people wanted to see the fan interaction. They wanted to see the Rock cut a promo. Right. They wanted to see Stone Cold do his thing. They wanted to what? see DX say suck it and all that. I mean, what? I don't know if they really much watch as much wrestling as they did for the environment that it was in. Right. After last week's live impact, which was great, by the way, we're going to see it continue to evolve. We're going to see more and more of it. I think, as you said, the key is going to be restraint and really still ensuring that there is a line that is not crossed. Because I don't want to see, but eh, what people want to see now too, though, I guess, and what's fascinating to, to some people is now what happens when you go buy a movie DVD, you've got all these extras and all this behind the, the scenes stuff, yeah, and yeah, people are intrigued by that. So I, the yeah, blooper reel. This could be quite brilliant oh, by TNA. Blooper reel, is there? You know what, I will, I will say this about TNA. Them going live shows confidence they have in their roster that is kind of unproven in live TV. We talked about uh, Orton, Jericho, 
you look at some of the other, other people who are departed from WWE, Rey Mysterio's of the world, blah, 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 blah. Who has the better roster overall right now? Not counting the megastar that's Cena and, and things of that nature, but who has the better overall wrestling I think roster? If you want to go overall wrestling talent roster, it's going to be TNA Impact Wrestling. Minus John Cena, because I think it's fair, because I don't think there's a Cena comparison in TNA. Would you agree? They don't have a company face. They have Jeff Hardy. If you want, on the same scale, no. But if you're talking, yeah, just for, apples, for, apples. for John Cena, it's Jeff Hardy. No one sells more merch than Jeff Hardy in TNA. No one sells more. See, than you John went there. Cena. I'm not talking that. I'm not talking that. I'm just talking because what I was, the point I was making about Cena is obviously he's, he's he's a promo guy, and obviously you know he he, he sells tickets. But if you because we talked about wrestling, comparing wrestling, you Jeff would say Hardy TNA sells tickets. He does. When we're talking about wrestling, you're saying uh, from a wrestling standpoint, TNA has the better roster. From an overall standpoint, who has the better roster, WWE or TNA? If you're saying overall by, by crossover appeal, well, it's, it's, it's the machine. To do weekly television. Not crossover, not outside of wrestling, but just to present. Nobody compares to WWE, and that is going across the board from NFL, NBA, MLB, any other sport, any other entertainment. On the roster alone. Talking about the roster alone. Absolutely, because there's no, they have the most characters. Okay. Okay. Is this going to work? Well, they got eight weeks to figure it out. They have uh, ten left, yes. You know? Uh, we did find out, in case you didn't hear it, uh, TNA President Dixie Carter did a conference call with uh, several members of the media last week. It was revealed that it is a 12-week uh, plan as of now, 12 or 13-week plan, to, because there's a pay-per-view in the way, uh, plan for Impact to be live, and they're going to evaluate after that. What's also fascinating was apparently the network, according to TNA President Dixie Carter, Spike TV, um, back around Thanksgiving had requested that uh, TNA go for three hours with its weekly Impact for <laughs> Program. Is that obvious? Here's what's gonna be here's what's gonna be difficult to gauge. They're going live at the same time. They're making format changes at the same time. They're moving up their time slot. So what's gonna be the reasoning for any ratings increase if there is one? Because at the end of the day, that's what the network's gonna be looking at. Is it the time slot? Is it the format change? Or is it going live? Or is it all those things? Well, I think I think that the time slot's gonna be huge for them. Yeah. Because now it's 7 o'clock. Yep. I mean, that one hour, it may not be a big difference to you or I, but to the little Jimmys of the world, absolutely. Because now they can watch almost the whole show before going to bed early or whatnot. But uh, you know what? Let's just cross our fingers and our toes and whatever else you want to cross, and let's just hope that TNA has a successful 12 weeks where the company starts to build up some cash reserves where they can go out and do some bigger and better things. That's uh, like this funding a lawsuit. It's this week's in depth, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to take a timeout, and when we come back, we're going to revisit a segment of old here on the Pro Wrestling Report Interactive, where we answer your emails. Uh, all that plus the history book. And uh, what else we got? Ask the Booker. Austin will come here on the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Wednesday night. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Wednesday night. Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Hero. And it's time to go into this week's interactive segment. Where, and what happens here is you send us an email. Could be a question, could be a comment, could be a concern, could be anything. We'll select um, some of them to be read right here on air. And this week, our question I comes to us from... Now, this is different from... Um, you didn't do a damn thing. You think you did. If you lost your mind... No. Have you gone completely crazy? They even have the Japanese flag on here. That's amazing. Don't kick it. I'm not touching it. Different from Ask the Booker, because that's a question directly related to uh, booking something. This is a question, actually, that uh, goes right uh, 
alongside our top story, our in-depth segment, actually. This comes from Troy Alston. And David, listen carefully, because I know your listening skills are a bit bad. And I quote, Troy says this, it is clear that TNA is going one hour early and live each Thursday. The only downside is that Mike, Tanay, and Taz need some help calling matches and getting the bad guys over. That's what you need to bring some, that's why you need to bring someone like Raven or Tom Pritchard in who could play that role, meaning that the Jerry Lawler of TNA who is funny, smart, or, and would do and say anything to make the bad guy look good, that's what TNA is missing right now, and that's what TNA needs right now. I guess to summarize and to make that a little bit more easy to answer for us, the team, the broadcasting team they have right now may not focus enough on emphasizing the bad guys in TNA. Well, they're not really telling stories is the problem. And the problem with that is the reason they're not telling stories is because they're not there when the show is being taped. Well, not, well it's live now. So. But now it's live, yeah. so now things are going to be different because now they're going to get... They're going to get the feel of the audience. They're going to get the initial reaction. Yep. They're not going to get a chance to watch it over, rewind it, and then speak their mind. Slap it up, flip it, rub it up. Let's be real here. <laughs> Let's be real here. We've listened to those two on many a pay-per-view, and we've cringed. Well, yeah, but you know what? Raven is not. They're the, great, by the Raven way. Raven is not the answer. Okay, he's not. Dr. Tom Pritchard just got released. Mm -hmm. He may be coming to TNA in some capacity. Brotherly really love? No, he was um, Bruce Pritchard. No, Dr. Tom Pritchard. I know, but they're they're brothers. Right. Yeah, well, the same last name. Come on, do you know this? I said brotherly love because then they'd be working in the same company. Oh, it was your play on words. Yes. Oh, I thought you were just being you. smart. <sighs> and oh, that's why oh, I am I gotta, I a host of the years because, because you had no idea where you were before that little distraction. Oh, no. What we were saying is, and uh, those two are strong. Taz was great in WWE when he was being produced. Tanay is fantastic. I think that at times the challenge is, without them being as produced as WWE's they're broadcasters are. They're bored. They've been doing it too long. Nothing has changed. They haven't changed anything up. Now that they're going to be live, they're going to be from a live audience, they should do better. But listen, when you're stuck and you're in a rut and you're doing a .7 to a point, you know, or one point, whatever. They're doing very good ratings as of late. They're doing better now. the ratings for live? Yes, but let me finish before I mute you. The thing is, is that they had no reason to get better because they didn't believe in the product. Now that things are changing, the locker room in TNA, the morale has improved. They believe that, okay, now they're gonna start developing us into stars, you know, similar to what happens on Raw and SmackDown. And when, they, and when the talent feels better about what they're doing in the ring, it's gonna show with the commentators. Mike Tanay is the professor. He did a tremendous job on Nitro and Thunder. He helped those guys a long ways. Maybe they do need to be produced. Maybe there should be somebody in their headset pointing things out to them and helping them get on track. Vince McMahon, say what you want about him, but he wants his talent to be the absolute best they can be. And if that means he's going to browbeat him once in a while to get him where he wants him, hey, he's the guy that signs the check. If you don't like it, they can leave. Today and Taz, interesting to see what happens for the next few weeks going forward in front of a live studio audience. Thank you, Troy, for that uh, submission, and uh, you can submit yours as well. Just visit our website, pwrshow.com, and a little reminder about pwrshow.com, especially as it pertains to Wednesday's uh, primetime. A lot of people were tweeting us and asking us where was primetime last Wednesday. Well, as you know, primetime's up Wednesday at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Well, it was sitting on our website the whole time. So instead of waiting for YouTube, go to our website, pwrshow.com, where you're always guaranteed to get the episodes of the Pro Wrestling Report at their scheduled broadcast time. So uh, you can do that uh, each and every week. Because we like to take care of those of you who take care of us by actually visiting our website and supporting us as Pro Wrestling Report. Thank you, Troy. And uh, again, back before that uh, little thing there is uh, you can find the Contact Us link and send us your email at pwrshow.com. Now let's go back in time and let's go into this week's history book. And David Hero, I want to go back to New Orleans, Louisiana. Not last Monday's Raw, but uh, 2009, where WWE Extreme Rules occurred on pay-per-view. And here's what's interesting. Amongst the matches that happened, the main event 
the main event or one of the matchups that occurred was John Cena versus The Big Show in a submission match. 20 minutes. John Cena defeats The Big Show. And uh, as we go into this June's pay-per-view this year, it's John Cena and The Big Show in a cage match. So the repeating history. Oh, I heard history repeats itself Three from time years to time. Ago. Mm -hmm. That seems forever ago, doesn't it? No, not really. When I looked at these results, I said, oh, yeah, I remember that because it was also um, when uh, that, Vicky was Miss okay. WrestleMania. But if you look at the roster three years ago. Yeah. Let's look at some of the names that were on this card, all right? blows away the roster they got right now. Kofi Kingston, United States champion. MVP, Matt Hardy, William Regal, all in a four way matchup. Chris Jericho, Rey Mysterio, no holds barred match. It was for the Intercontinental Championship. CM Punk defeated Umaga in a strap match. That would be Umaga's last appearance for WWE after being, uh, he would be released two or three days later. Uh, Tommy Dreamer defeated the ECW champion Christian. And Jack Swagger. In a hardcore match. I mean, these names, I mean, yeah. Batista. Santino Morella, Chavo Guerrero Jr., obviously Vicky Guerrero, Batista, Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, Edge. Interesting stuff, right? Better roster? Did CM Punk cash in that night? Looks he like did. it, huh? He cash in that night. Huh, wow. Yeah. Better roster? I mean, I, they had more depth, that's for sure. I mean, they didn't have a Cody Rhodes in a prominent role at that point. The Miz wasn't in a prominent well, role Cody at that was point. There in the company. He, he was. was. He, he was, was with. Match. It was legacy. Stop that. Your hate. I mean, he was not in a dark it match says in 2009. It's a dark match right there. I can't see it. The ink is too dark. Uh, I guess. Three years ago, Raw was in New Orleans last Monday. Again, topical, extreme rules on pay-per-view, um, and uh, we're going into if you, No Way Out on pay-per-view. If pay -per -view. you didn't have to watch No Way Out, would you order it? If I didn't have to watch it, would I order it? I don't think that's, well, it's this Sunday. We know most of the matchups. Do I care about Brian Punk Daniels? Do I care about no, no, show? No, 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 it's Punk. DBD and Kane. Sorry. I guess that shows how much I care about it. See what I mean? Do I care about show and uh, Cena? Now, nah, you know what? If I didn't have to, uh, no, nah, I probably wouldn't be ordering this pay-per-view. Just saying, Brocephus. Well, that's this week's history book, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let's now go into our timeout. When we come back, we're going to go into this week's Ask the Booker. You got my sheets all mixed up here, and I'm trying to, trying to keep, my, keep, keep my roll on here, keep my flow going. Still to come here on the Pro Wrestling Report, it's uh, Ask the Booker. Somebody has submitted a question for this guy, and believe it or not, they actually want to hear his answer. We're going to go to that when we come back right here on the Pro Wrestling Report, primetime Wednesday night. There's only one place to get the latest from pro wrestling, including the only place to get 100% verified wrestling news. Watch or listen to all of our latest TV and radio broadcasts on demand and get caught up on wrestling news between episodes. PWRshow.com is the cleanest, friendliest, and most fan-friendly source for wrestling news on the web. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Wednesday night. It's time for this week's Ask the Booker, ladies and gentlemen, where you can submit an email to atb at pwrshow.com, and that one will uh, potentially answer your question if you can get through all the spin that will be included with it. And this one comes to us from Josh Taylor in Denver, Colorado. Josh has this to say, David Hero. Listen closely. With David's recent statements about the stars of today not being able to wrestle, I have this question for him. The Best of Seven series is a tremendous way to get mid-card talent over, as well as giving management the opportunity to see what talents can pull off in a different match every time, and if they have the skills to move into the main event scene. To my knowledge, the last time we saw a Best of Series was Booker T versus Chris Benoit, which helped both talents remarkably in the long run. Why is this concept not used? And if it was, who, if anyone, would be a candidate to pull off this type of gimmick? I will correct that. Um, Josh, you may not remember the best of seven. The last one we actually saw was the machine guns and... Uh, Beer money. Beer money, which yes. was fantastic. If you want to go way back, look up Magnum, T Magnum TA and Nikita Koloff. Really? Those were fantastic also. Absolutely. <sighs> Best of seven. Is, 
Maybe because they would not want to invest in the seven matches. <laughs> that, the, that the fans' attention span won't succeed with that right now. I mean, even when they did Booker T and Benoit, after match three, you were kind of like, oh, they, they can end this. I mean, people... Eh, not me, anyways. Well, but you're a different kind of wrestling fan. You're that guy. No, I'm this guy. If they could do a best of seven, I would maybe have, like, ADR and Christian. Hmm. Or... Dolph Ziggler versus Cody Rhodes. Oh, I wow. Think, I think those two guys could tear it up. But, do, but if you think about it, the best of seven matches, it only it usually involved a championship belt. Mm-hmm. When it was Magnum TA and Nikita, it was for the U.S. title. I believe it was for the same with Benoit and Booker T. Mm-hmm. They never have really truly done the world championship in a best of seven. Um, it's just hard to, to, to have those guys go out there and do those kind of matches right now because unique, they're, yeah. it's a unique match. The wrestlers today haven't been put in those positions because they don't get to go out and, and, and go to different territories and different towns and try out different things. If you look at the house show results, whether it be for Impact or for Raw or the SmackDown brand, Every house show result always has the same kind of finish. Yeah. So they don't well, go out and try different things. In cycles. Well, if, if they do a loop of four or five towns. Right, exactly. It's the exact same yeah. show, the yeah. exact same finish. Yeah. I don't, you know, I mean, best of sevens, it worked great in the 80s, mid to late 90s. I don't know if it works well today. In that case, let's bring back a World War III match, a scaffold match, a... Uh... Oh, you will never see a scaffold match again. Really? Because of Cordette's knees? Oh, so many guys got hurt. I mean, would you want to go up on a scaffold a... and take a bump like that? I'd do it. No, you don't even climb a ladder three, th- three rungs. What I know how to fall. About? I know how to fall. Of course you do. Tuck your chin. Thank you, Josh, out in Denver for submitting that question to uh, ask the booker. And again, we welcome all of you to do the same thing, ATB at PWRshow.com. Well, David, that is it for this Wednesday edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. Be sure to join us if you're watching us in the southeastern Wisconsin area at Karma Bar and Grill tomorrow night as we do our live viewing of the live TNA Impact Wrestling on Spike TV, followed by a little segment taped for the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Saturday night. Linda Kay showing up on Thursday nights. They have tater tots there, you know. I'm glad. I got nervous <laughs> when I'm like, whoa, that's so inappropriate. I love tater tots. You can't so get them I everywhere. I say Linda Kay and you think tater tots. In an effort to not let you say whatever it is you were going to say next, because I deemed it probably I inappropriate, I, I decided to talk about Karma. the food that they serve at Karma Bar and Grill in the PWR Lounge that is just fantastic. It is fantastic, yes. And they have amazing pizza. Is the Kaz going to be there this week? Yes, the Kaz is there. Really? Yes. I thought he was um, respackling your walls in your basement. Well, I haven't seen him in months. Whatever he does in my basement, I don't want to know about it. That's this week's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Wednesday night. Is that like truck and a key stick? Uh, For that one, this is Tavia Nelson saying thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week.